At their training camp in the heart of Africa, these new recruits are learning their treat. The world of them rebels. They call themselves the Munt for the Liberation of the Congo, the MLC. Their leader is a self-made millionaire, Jean-Pierre Bemba. Can the MLC liberate Congo? Two years ago it didn't exist. But now Bemba and his movement are key players in Africa's most complex war. join the MLC. But no one is paid. And for just one reason, according to one of Bemba's commanders. The MLC has existed for two years. At the beginning, it wasn't about numbers. They came even though they knew they wouldn't be paid. And they keep coming. If we gave you the numbers, you'd be impressed. They know they won't be paid, but they know there's freedom, so they keep coming. There aren't enough guns, the uniforms to go around. But from 150 volunteers at the start, member of Support of Ganda has gathered, trained an army 20,000. That's men, women and children. Two years into his rebellion, Bamberg calls an air the side Germany. The Congo, the former Belgian colony, is Africa's third largest country. For 30 years it was run by one man, Mobutu Sese Seko. But in 1997 Mobutu was overthrown by Laurent Kabila, to by Rwanda. One year later, Rwanda withdrew its support from Kabila. The country collapsed into civil war. Six African neighbors intervened, Uganda and Rwanda supporting rebel movements. Based in Equatorial province in the north, the youngest of these is the MLC, controlled by Jean-Pierre Bemba. Bemba proved as successful in Pollocks as he once was business. In his brief life as a rebel leader, he has prized some 7 million Congolese away from government control. Today is the first anniversary of the liberation, as he calls it, of the provincial capital, Badolit. Bamba is greeted like a head of state. The President, the Movement of Liberation of Congo, His Excellence, the Detachment of the Police, the Rangers, Pour vous accueillir, nous vous rendre à l'honneur à l'occasion du premier anniversaire de libération de Badati. Bemba's pence came from the province. His father was a highly successful businessman, closely associated with the old regime and all of its corruption. Now the son has come home with the aim, he said, of leading the crusade against everything his own father stood for. What he might put in its place remains to be seen. Bemba they sing, Papa Bemba, Bayimtu, Man of Steel. A court of Commandant Lembia, Bemba has already done the most important thing. He has been people liberty. People know that President Bemba has no money to hand out. He hasn't promised to reconstruct the place in three years, do magic, walk on water, but he has given people back their liberty.
il est à rendre la liberté. Bon, si biso bana na bino. To se na kabana po na nini. Il faut tous à la capable biso morceau qui lobby. Nzambe yemo ko ebi tant oye ko kata. Mais boye pa que fin de fin to ko sil ça bitumba oyo. Kabila ou bien Kabila ko kota na ba négociation. Mona to ko sil ça problème na biso noki. Pe so ki Kabila a boy. Should we let one man, one genocider, disturb life of 50 million people? Is it fair for all these Congolese people to be disturbed by one man who is not elected at all? Has never been elected. Nayango. Kabila, the unelected Congolese president, was once a rebel himself. But, as president, he headed the MLC's list of enemies. New recruits quickly learned Mobutu was bad. But the man who replaced him, they say, is worse. The recruits don't need too much persuading. Most have their own stories of life under Kabila. Two years ago, Zemana was a school teacher. Certains bon jour, je suis entré de partir à l'école. Subitement, je suis tombé de donner le coup d'anglais. Dans la salle, j'ai vu les militaires qui sont arrivés dans l'école. Ça toutefois me demander ou bien demander pourquoi les militaires sont venus m'arrêter directement. Ils commencent à me frapper devant tous les enfants. À partir de là, j'étais tellement décidé de quitter l'école en fait d'être dans l'armée. Ce sont l'expérience que j'ai vécue lors de monsieur, monsieur le président Kabila. Five thousand miles away in Belden, Olivier Kamitatu is taking a well break from the realities of war. Olivier is second in command of the MLC, but he was born in Brussels and raised by his foster mother, Anne-Marie Engelbrecht. Like his own son, he was always football crazy. Avant ça, donc je jouais là-bas le mercredi, l'équipe du collège. On jouait contre les autres collèges en fait. Et le, le week-end, je jouais dans le club de, du village. Toute la science était le football. Plus important que la fin. Beaucoup plus. Le football était, euh, était sacré. This is only the second time in a year that Olivier has seen Anne-Marie and his own children. For him, being an absent father is a situation that's all too familiar. You know, my father was a politician. And uh, it was very difficult uh, in the beginning of the 60s. And when uh, Mobutu took power, he sent my father in jail during several years. So that's the reason why security, my father preferred to send children to Europe. That's the reason I sent uh, all my uh, childhood in, uh, in Belgium. And is it going to be the same for you? Yeah, unfortunately. <laughs> it's, uh, yeah, it's the same, yeah, the same, just for the security and also for the education, it's very important. Olivier grew up in this small Catholic community with its emphasis on family and duty. Today, on the 100th anniversary of his old tool, he's brought face face with the contrast between the values of his childhood and his own decision to go to war. Ce matin, nous venons d'entendre quelques textes bibliques qui nous parlent également d'une vie passionnée. 
une passion pour la dignité de l'homme et pour la liberté. I think it's very important one day to stop, to think about the past and the future and to see if what we are doing, if uh, our sacrifice means something important, not only for uh, my family, but also for uh, my friends and uh, the people in Congo. We need to, to install a new political order, a new political dispensation, democratic institutions. That's the reason why we are fighting. The real problem for our country is just to prove that we can so, uh, as we have been educated in Belgium and Europe, with, in contact with democracy, we must now play a major role in Africa to do the same, to give the same chance to, to, to Africans. For Anne-Marie, Olivier's foster mother, the real problem is what happens to Olivier's children. What is more important, the children or what? I remember Olivier's father in Zaire. He said he'd failed the important thing, the education of his children. I don't know if he's doing well badly, but I see he's left behind. It's early morning in Balite, the MLT headquarters in the far north of the Congo. There's no doubt here that Bemba is the man in charge. Surrounded by radios, faxes and satellite telephones, Bemba runs his movement as he once ran his business. Before starting the MLC, Bemba's interests ranged from coffee to air freight, from fish to a mobile telephone network. That's how we met Uganda's President Museveni. In fact, uh, when I was a businessman, I used to export uh, fish from uh, Uganda. But when this um, problem uh, appeared with Kabila, and, uh, President Museveni asked to, to help us Congolese, to help me to liberate our country, to build an army. But you're a businessman, you're not a soldier. Why are you leading a rebellion? But you know, nobody born uh, soldiers, nobody is born a politician. You become a politician, you become a soldier. And I think to be soldiers, you need, of course, uh, some training. That's what I got in Kisangani with uh, some uh, Uganda instructor. Back from Belgium, Olivier Kantato resumes his role as Bemba's closest ally. They've been friends for 20 years and their time together at business school in Belgium. Now a single purpose unites them, to get rid of Kabila's government. But ideologically, they agree to differ. Personally, I'm a Christian of the left. It's not very fashionable to say I'm a Christian of the left. Ça veut dire que je crois means I believe in the value of sharing. Bemba is a man of right who believes the private enterprise guarantees the development of the country. He's wedded to the market economy and competition. It's a measure of Bemba's success he's been able to attract a wide range of people to the MLD. For no hey. To Peter Azabi in the MLC nine months ago. Now he's the Minister of Health. His war uniform sits uneasily with his civilian calling. This is for killing, but this is to save. Okay. 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 Okay.
que mon père, qui est pasteur protestant, euh, ne, ne veut pas pour moi qu'il soit un Today's operation is to move assist. Before he starts, the doctor leads his team in prayer. Like everyone else at the MLC, Dr. Azabi is coming to terms with new life as a rebel. He's still not sure how politics and medicine mix. Il m'est difficile de vous répondre si... Comes with his new life as a rebel. He's still not sure how politics and medicine mix. Il m'est difficile de vous répondre si... It's difficult to say which of the two I prefer. We're busy liberating the country, helping each other. I've been minister since September last year. That's nine months as minister, 18 years as a doctor. We'll just have to see. Dr. Asabi will soon have his chance. Bemba is sending him to the front line to see for himself. It's dawn, Badolite, the MLC's base airport. The three Ukrainian mercenaries who fly the rebels' only transport plane are getting ready to take food and ammunition to the war zone. <laughs> Among the passes today is Minister of Health, Dr. Peter Asai. In the absence of telephones or effective radios, the only real to find out what's happening is to go and see for yourself. I'm going to assess the condition of the people in our charge. Civilians and soldiers, the front line. To see the food and health situation. That's what interests me most. Six months ago, this Trent Antonov transport was Park Kabila's Air Force. But a pilot landed by mistake on an airstrip just captured by the MLC. Members' soldiers seized the plane. Now it flies round the clock, carrying troops and supplies to MLC outposts scattered across this huge territory. It's a two-day journey to the front, first by air, then by river. That's where the war is concentrated. In the absence of roads, Whoever controls the rivers, controls the Congo. The front is 200 kilometers downstream. Supplies are irregular. Along with the minister, the boats carrying flour, green beans, weapons, and 25 soldiers returning to their units. Everyone who joins the movement has a story. Dr. Peter Asabi was working for a mission hospital in government-held territory. One night, driving home, he was stopped by government troops. They said, if you resist, if you don't give us your car, we'll shoot you. Don't mess us around. Don't think that because you're a doctor, we won't kill you. I wet myself, that's how stressed I was. 
I'm a doctor, but I still couldn't control myself. They fired two machine gun rounds. They put a gun to my head and said, if you continue to risk, we'll shoot you. From the moment I became a refugee, it's the rebels who protect, it's the opposite of what you'd expect. The whole population is here asking for protection. At the village along the way, the rebels stopped to pick up cash of weapon abandoned by government troops when they fled the area. A year ago, all the parties, including Kabila's government and the MLC, met at Lusaka in Zambia and signed a ceasefire. But it hasn't stopped the fight, especially on this stretch of river. These fusils have been recovered in the military of Kabila and the Fak Fro. We have to say that we are rebels. We don't have enough money to buy weapons. So we have recovered some weapons in Kabila. With these weapons, it will help us to continue our work. What are you going to do now? But... Vous savez bien le travail des armes, c'est quoi J'ai tout dit, c'est tout. At an early morning stop comes a batch of even more important weapons, boxes of mortems. They are part of the continuing support for the MLD from Uganda. It's powerful propaganda Kabila's government to be able to point to such foreign interference in Congolese affairs. It's a relationship that Bemba prefers to play down. You know that uh, most of the equipment and munition we captured was from Kabila. Do you know that when we capture him in Badolite, we get 300 tons of equipment, bomb, ammunition? But President, the mortar bombs that we sat on in the boat going down the river were marked from Uganda. No, 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 no. Um, I don't know. If you read even in the, in the boxes, is it uh, from Uganda or if it's for DRC? I, what I'm trying to understand is, how dependent militarily you are still on Uganda. But uh, do you know that uh, what is uh, 300 ton of ammunition capture? 300 ton of ammunition. It's million, million, million ammunition that I'm using until now. <laughs> Bemba may be evasive about the origins of his weapons, but he makes the most of one continuing source of recruits. At an MLC re-indoctrination center, 50 prisoners of war from Kabila army have given the opportunity to change sides. Commander Lembia has qualms about getting them into MLC ranks. When they come, they say, I was on the other side, but I've had enough, I want to join. There's no formality. They have to accept the code of conduct and ideology of the MLC. Then they are free to join. These soldiers say that just before they were captured, a part of a government unit that fused to go back to front. Happen next is part why they're ready to change sides. Like this. 
Fulani Azali, Fulani Azali, to ebi ke ba bomie is place. Et tout ce qu'on va sur le bâti pour soucier l'équipe. In this war of shifting allegiances, some soldiers have served in three different armies. Luke Parenzi comes from a military family. In seven years, he's fought for Mobutu, and Kabila, and now Bemba. Many of his friends have done the same, and they're in no doubt that they could drop Bemba just as easily as they dropped the others. Dans l'armée de Kabila, on ne prenait pas les gens à leur place qu'ils faisaient. On négligeait d'abord les gens. On négligeait la population. La population était maltraitée. Et les militaires de Kabila faisaient des tracasseries à la population. La différence dans la main de Bema. Et je dirais bien que maintenant on veut tout changer. On veut tout changer. C'est-à-dire On veut corriger toutes les erreurs que faisait Kabila. Il n'est pas de Bemba. Et l'armée n'est pas de Bemba. L'armée, c'est de la nation. Parce que si Bemba aussi fait mal, il travaille mal, c'est la population qui aura une décision sur lui. Mais lui, il n'aura pas la décision sur toute l'armée. Ce n'est pas ça. Ce n'est pas vrai. Parce que c'est ce que même moi, je leur ai dit. Vous n'êtes pas ici pour servir un homme. Parce que servir un homme dans l'armée est très dangereux. Vous êtes ici pour servir les gens du Congo. Tomorrow, the army, the national army, will be national army for the people of Congo, what not for one man. What was the mistake with Mobutu time? What is the mistake with Kabila time? It is a private army. The priority for the rebels is the war. In liberated areas, it is to the people to make of this what they can. On his way to the front, Dr. Asabi visits a school. It was closed 12 months ago because of the fighting and reopened only recently. Two weeks ago, the town was bombed by government plants. Two bombs landed in a playground but didn't go off. It's the first time anyone's come from rebel headquarters. The teachers aren't paid and the MLC has nothing to offer. But Ben Man isn't going to miss the opportunity to score of political points. Libenge Oye! Movement de libération du Congo! Oye! Oye! Kabila! Oye! Kabila! Oye! 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 In this town, the MLC has brought peace but little else. In the primary school, the problems are desperate. There are few textbooks, pens, or even exercise books. This teacher, like everyone else, gets no salary. He has to grow his own food in a nearby field. Each child is supposed to pay the teacher 10p a term for what are called motivation fees. But even it's too much for any parents. Some children have been here since we came back and still haven't paid. If we throw them out, an innocent child will suffer. But because they haven't paid, it has repercussions on us. We suffer. We pray to God that the MLC reaches Kinshasa and afterwards gives us back some sort of life because we're half dead. Two days and nights after 
are setting off down the Ubangi. Minister and his boat are approaching the front line. The minister's never been before. Luke's returning from sick leave. At daybreak, Commandant Alemia arrives to greet his political superior. It didn't start well. He didn't know the minister was coming. Alemia organizes an impromptu visit to trenches, where fighting appears to be the last thing on anyone's mind. <laughs> Keep the minister happy, a few soldiers climb into the trenches. But the last time they saw action here was two months ago. We've got a fixed position. As you've seen, it's not just a month old. We've been there a long time. We've even planted vegetables. So every time they come after us, right up to here, they bomb every day, for days on end. We defend our positions and people. We can't leave them to the mercy of Kabila. We owe it to the population. These refugees have just returned from across the river. It's safe to do so, as they say, now that the MLC have acted Kabila's men. Ils ont ressemblé tout le monde, c'est pour ça maintenant nous sommes libres d'aller au champ, prendre de quoi manger, tout ça. With the war at a standstill, Bemba must open a second front. This time, 6,000 miles away on the streets of New York. Two years fighting, Bemba is beginning to see success on the diplomatic front. He sent his special envoy to New York to make the MLC's case at a meeting of the UN Security Council. Danny Kanku trained for the priesthood in Belgium, but now he's a real leader. Bemba, Dr. Asabi, Olivier Kamitatu, Dominic is learning a job. He's never been to the UN before, or to America for that matter. Not at all. I'm relaxed. I'm I'm fine. I, I'm not nervous at all, so I'm okay. Uh, I don't see why I can be nervous. There was a meeting in January. We weren't invited, so uh, we found it unfair that we weren't invited. But this time, I, we are invited. We are not here just to to please people. We are here to explain what's going on. And I think that uh, as the time passes by, people are. Uh, I've come to know that uh, the MC 
uh, doing a good job. So I'm very proud of uh, being here to present the movement uh, I belong to. The UN's been pressing all those who signed the peace treaty at Lusaka to simply honor the agreement. Once there's a lasting ceasefire, the Security Council has promised 500 observers backed by 5,000 UN troops to keep the peace, but the ceasefire is proving elusive. Today, the Security Council is making one more attempt to bring warring parties together. J'invite Monsieur Dominique Kankou, responsable des relations extérieures du Mouvement pour la Libération du Congo, MLC, à prendre place... It's a crucial moment of remission for Bemba's moot. But there's no chance yet for Dominique to stand and make his case. Instead, he quickly learns that recognition comes responsibility. I say quite frankly today, in the presence of the Lusaka signatories, that, uh, and particularly in this case, the Foreign Minister of the Democratic Republic of Congo and the representative of the MLC, that you we need to see a willingness on your part to halt the fighting. Le non respect des engagements pris par le gouvernement de la RDC dans le cadre de l'accord sur le statut des forces, mais aussi par les rebelles à travers des entraves au mouvement, <coughs> au mouvement de la force, ne sont pas acceptables. Et sur le chemin du retour <coughs> vers vos pays, vers l'Afrique, emmener nos pensées et penser à trois mots, la paix, la paix, la paix. In the Congo, MLC patrol is seeing off probe the government's front line. The UN accused the MLC and the others of simply breaking the ceasefire when it suits them. The MLC argue they have no choice. I heard one of the uh, UN members saying that even if we are attacked, we have no right to respond. This is kind of telling us you have to suicide yourself. So we are not ready to commit any side. If they attack, we will respond and we will define ourselves and the population, that's sure. It's not only the soldiers of MLC who are fighting. It's also all the population, all the population. They don't want to see anymore the war plains of Kabila or the equatorial region. So they say now, Mr. Bemba, what are you going to do? You say, okay, you are a liberation movement. Why are you decided to stop now? Are you going to betray the movement and uh, your population? And uh, that's the reason why we are ready to fight. So that means you're ready to break the ceasefire? In order to protect the population, yes. At the closing cocktail party at the UN, the Sabatis cannot conceal the frustrations. The UN demands a ceasefire, but the warring parties are not delivering. If Bemba and the others refuse to cooperate, they'll get no help from outside, says American Ambassador Richard Holbrook. I think I said this already downstairs, but let me say it again. It's going to be much harder to get uh, any countries than troops to Congo, and especially to Kisani. And now it's going to be harder for us to get money for the operation as a result of this. And I'm sure you're going to have the same problem in the European Union. Because the world doesn't understand what happened there, and to ask the world to contribute forces is going to be harder to do. Several hours later, Dominique Kanku still doesn't leave all he has heard. If they don't come, it's not because they don't have means, as they pretend. They have means, they have money, this is sure. And uh, they have uh, uh, whatever is required. You know, I just sometimes say, uh, I used to tell people, nobody cares. If somebody cares, I think that uh, UN should already be in Congo, but they don't care. I, that's my point of view. They prefer to, to say, okay, let those Congolese fighting among themselves. They will find a solution. But 
definitely have no interest in Congo for the moment. And if the UN don't come, what will happen? I think it will be very difficult to find uh, a solution by negotiations. At a hospital in MLC Territory, the latest victims of Kabila's air raids are being treated. The bombs are a simple but effective campaign by the government to persuade people the MLC cannot protect them. There are relatively few military casualties. Here, Petra Sabi sees 18 soldiers, most with shrapnel wounds. MLC won't admit how many they have lost in the war. This would be bad for recruitment. Further down the war is a different casualty, an MLC deserter. With other soldiers, he's tried to steal food from a village. The locals caught him and beat him up. The other soldiers are less than sympathetic. Back in Badalier, at Bamba's office, the minister comes to make his report. Asabi brings the unwelcome news that desertion is a worse problem than they thought. He tells of 30 deserters terrorizing villages. If the LC doesn't deal with them, local people will. It's bad the MLC's image, and yet another problem the commander in chief. Nani, Dr. Asabi a commandé à Yo, à la retour à Yé, à lui à mon aïe, à Pé Sayo, ma formation concernant la soirée à la mission et au bâtiment qui la font là, et si Kamada Kosa là bas des zones de la Bango, au Kamata ici, Kamata, il y a une équipe de et et où tu es et l'on est à Oua, et qui est qu'on a et ça, il y a un conseil des armées Bango, à faire résistance directement avec elle. Ok, ça va. Ok. Olivier Kamitato and his president are having the evening off. Between them, they've made the MLC into a major player in the war for the Congo. If Bamba cedes, his vision will become the Congolese reality. He claims to have only best intentions. What I would like is to give the dignity back to the people. We we'll lose it with a dictator system put in place by Kabila and his group of people. That is really my only dream. If I can do it by myself, I will be very pleased. If another one can do it also, I will be very pleased also. But pressed, Olivier concedes that his friend has ambitions for the top job. Okay, Bemba will be the next president of Congo. <laughs> Bemba will be the next president of Congo if MLC enter in Kinshasa. Okay, and uh, yeah. It's quite easy to, to, to enter in Kinshasa by guns and to say, okay, I'm, I'm president now. It will be much more difficult to organize elections to be uh, the next elected president of Congo or of the year. We must uh, prove that we can organize something. Not only for, for the moment of the, the rebellion, but also for the future. So it will be a, a great challenge for us and for them if we want to be the next productive president. For the moment, Bemba is a law unto himself and not subject to the discipline running for election. But he does depend on the support of his colleagues and, more important, on the support of his unpaid, ill-equipped army. Kamal Alembi insists he will keep on fighting until freedom is won. 
I will continue till the day I shave. I'll keep my beard until the day we win. Not just us, but when the people, when freedom triumphs. We have it, but they don't. To share their unhappiness, I'll keep my beard until the day of freedom. Then we'll all shave. It'll be a big day. <laughs> the MLT frontline position on the river is only four days by boat from Kinshasa, the capital. <laughs> Luke Morenzi is pleased to be back, but he has no way of knowing if that journey will take a few days or several years. <laughs> Combien de temps pensez-vous que la guerre va durer La guerre oh, Ça, je ne peux pas savoir. Ça, je ne peux pas savoir. Parce que ce ce n'est pas moi les commandants de la guerre. Ce n'est pas moi les guerres tout puissants parce que Dieu aussi aide pour que la guerre avance. Qu'est-ce que j'attendais Qu'est-ce que j'attends Oui. J'attends que la paix soit en Afrique. Laurent Kobila was regarded by many as the main obstacle to the Lusaka Accord. His son, the new president, has moved quickly to assure the international community that he wants to bring peace to his country. Whether that includes talking to the rebels remains to be seen. <laughs>